In the last video, we looked at the probabilities of bigrams and how we can use those probabilities to then estimate the probabilities of a whole sentence. We also saw how these probabilities can help us distinguish between a good English sentence and an ungrammatical English sentence. Here we're going to look at an extended example. This example is from our textbook from Jurafsky and Martin, and this is sentences about restaurants. They developed a project in the mid 90s where they tried to have a little chatbot that would take your questions about restaurants and then give you an output of what restaurant you should go to or, or what the restaurant served. They collected a little bit over 9,000 sentences in English, such as, uh, can you tell me about any good Cantonese restaurants close by? Or tell me about Chef Benice? Or when is Cafe Venezia open during the day? So they had those sentences and developed the system. One uh, example that we can derive from this is the probabilities for independent sentences. And we're going to use a small subset of the results for this. We have the words, I want to eat Chinese food, lunch, spent. So three, six, eight words. And we're going to derive unigram and bigram probabilities for those words. So the unigram probabilities are just the counts of how many times we see the word. For example, we see the word I 2,533 times. We see the word want 927 times. And then what we have there is the rest of uh, the counts of how many times we see each word. Spent, we see 278 times. And then we add all those up and it's 8,493 times that we see those eight words. So from that we can get the probability of, for example, observing the unigram I, which is 2,533 divided by the total 8,493, not in radians, there we go. So it's 29.8%. So 29.8% of the unigrams is the word I. And when we add all those probabilities, we get one or 100% because this is the total for the words. Every time we look for a word, we're going to find it in the corpus, be it I, want, to, etc. Here we have the bigram counts for these words. So for example, we see the sequence I, I five times. We see the sequence I want 827 times. We see the sequence I eat nine times and so on for every combination. We also have sequences that we never see. For example, the sequence I2 is observed zero times, and we have the zero there. From this, we could derive the probability of the bigrams. So if we want the probability of I want, which is the probability of want given I, we need to count the number of bigrams I want. So how many instances I have I want? And from the previous table, that was 827. And we need to divide it by the number of times we observe I, which is the count of the unigram I, which is 2,533 times. And let me move this around. 827 divided by 2,533 is 32.6, approximately 33%, which is what we see here, 0.33. So this 0.33 is the probability of that bigram, which again is the probability of the word want given the word I. We have the bigram probabilities for all of them. So for example, we have uh, the probability of eat two, which is the probability of two given eat, 0 0.0027. We have the probability of the bigram to eat, which is the probability of eat given two, 0 0.28. There's a few that uh, do not exist. For example, the bigram to want is not present in the corpus, and therefore its probability is zero because there's no occurrences of the bigram to want. 
So now, this is an exercise for you. I want you to try to calculate the probabilities for the sentence, I want food and I eat food. And by the way, these are some additional probabilities that you'll need. The probability of the bigram start of the sentence I, which is the probability of the word I given the start of a sentence, it's 0 0.25, and the probability of the bigram food end of sentence, which is the probability of the end of sentence given food. So with those numbers, please use the chain of probability rule to calculate the probability of the sentence I want food and I eat food. Remember that you would need to decompose those sentences into their link of bigrams and then multiply those probabilities to get a large probability. Um, go ahead and do that and um, pause the video. I'm going to count to five. Welcome back. So the probability of the sentence is the probability of the bigram start of the word, start of the sentence I, which is 0 0.25, then I followed by want, which is 0 0.33, then want food, which is here, 0 0.0065, multiplied by food, end of sentence which is here, 0 0.68. This multiplication is 0 0.00036465. Likewise, the probability of I eat food is the probability of the start plus I, I plus eat, which is here, eat plus food, eat food, which is here, plus food and end of sentence. The multiplication is this. As you can see, uh, the first sentence is about two orders of magnitude more likely than the second sentence. Both sentences are correct and their probabilities are greater than zero, but one of them is much more likely given the corpus, and it's I want food. So this is how you would calculate the probability of a sentence given a corpus. There are some sentences that would be ungrammatical, such as I to food lunch. This would not be a grammatical sentence of English. And its probability would be zero because one of the bigrams does not exist in the corpus. So I2 is zero. There's nowhere in those 9,000 sentences where you have the sequence I2. So whatever the other elements are, they're multiplied by zero equals zero, which is the probability of that ungrammatical sentence. So this language model, an n-gram language model, correctly predicts that the sentence I want food and the sentence I eat food are both more likely than the sentence I to food lunch, which would match the intuition of an English speaker. We're still missing one step, which is what we'll um, be doing in the next video, which is how do we distinguish normal and common sentences and ungrammatical sentences from strange or unseen sentences. There might be sentences that are okay, but that we just don't have in the corpus, such as I uh, want to swim in the summer. I can't remember the exact sentence from a couple of videos ago. So there's sentences that you see very often in the corpus, sentences that are ungrammatical, and somewhere in the middle, you have sentences that you either never saw but are possible, or sentences that are a little strange but still admissible, such as, I want, want food, which is a an okay sentence of English, but this model will incorrectly predict that it, the probability of that sentence is zero because you never see the sequence, I want, want. You never have the biogram, want, want. In summary for this exercise, Again, we can predict the probability of a sentence by using n-grams. We use chains of bigrams, and by multiplying them as a chain of probability, we got the probability of an entire sentence. We can use this to distinguish good sentences from ungrammatical sentences. But we're going to need an additional element called smoothing to have a three-way distinction. Good sentences, ungrammatical sentences, and sentences we have never observed before,
but that we need to account for and that could be good English sentences. This is going to be the topic of our next video.